intergenerational dysfunctions linked to race, sexuality, and gender can subconsciously impact the lives of women of color and femme expressing folks of color, complicating our relationship with ourselves. The basis of several of these issues can be linked back to the chaos and destruction caused by colonialism. Confronting these issues through creative and artistic endeavors can catalyze us to embrace ourselves as whole, healthy beings. We've developed a disability accessible virtual gallery and virtual reception where creative women of color and femme expressing folks of color discuss their experiences with various social issues. These stories show how art can be used to empower yourself and for emotional and spiritual healing. We hope our efforts to bring folks together to tell these triumphant, empowering stories will spark healing discussions across cultures and communities resulting in solidarity. Hi, my name is Hai Si Hu. My pronouns is uh, she, her. I'm a Chinese woman. I have long black hair and wear black rimmed glasses. I'm sitting in front of a background of patterns with green leaves. Being an immigrant, it took me a long time to overcome the language and cultural barriers. Telling stories without words becomes the way I express myself reconcile with my hybrid identity of being a Chinese American. In this animation I'm showing, female figures with animal heads emerge out of a landscape of colorful mountains made of clay. A white owl woman stands in the middle of the scene. I create both claymation and hand draw animation, often combining them in the same video. I use many techniques, including painting, drawing, sculpting, and 3D modeling. And I'm always exploring new ways of making animation. I create surreal and supernatural worlds in my animations to express my sense of alienation. The second animation shows a group of raven-headed doctors examining a man on a table. Then the man wakes up and runs into the hallway. Making art helps me to deal with my anxiety and find my inner strength and self-worth. I learn not to be ashamed of my accent or when I mispronounce words. I'm passionate about animation because it enables me to tackle challenging subject matters like poverty and despair. Through animation, I can convey profound emotions with subtlety and craft intricate and imaginative scenes with a small budget. It is a limitless creative medium. However, it is also very time consuming and labor intensive. In this animation I'm showing, a girl walks into a forest with multicolored leaves. She discovers she can walk into a tree and be transformed into a beautiful princess. However, her beauty also attracts the attention of three gold-headed men. They pursue her through the forest. To avoid being captured, the girl turns into a tree. This clip is inspired by the mythology of Apollo and Daphne.
In my creative process, I often draw inspiration from mythology and iconic paintings. Rather than being constrained by my identity, I strive to transcend all limitations and delve into the archetypal essence of the human experience. Mythology provides invaluable insights into the universal aspect of our existence, giving me a deeper understanding and connection with my work. Hi, my name is Kai Thais. I am a multidisciplinary artist from Puerto Rico. My pronouns are she, her. I have short brown curly hair, tan brown skin, and a couple of tattoos and piercings. I have a black shirt and I stand next to my piece as ear. A watercolor depicting a feminine body with blue hair that stares into the spectator's eyes while it holds its chest. With it, I continue my line of exploring the body and the connection of the self, perception, and the body from the perspective of a chronically ill queer woman of color. A thematic line that is present in most of my works, at least in the two showcased in this video. The second one being Chronicles from After the Storm which is a 47 by 47 inch acrylic piece on raw canvas that depicts the act of the first bath that I took after a storm. It was a vulnerable place, a vulnerable state to be in, and I wanted to immortalize it in the form of painting because I know it not only helps me process how the climate crisis has affected my country and me, but also how it is a story that other people can share. I find that my art is the first tool I have to explore the human condition and express myself from the most authentic place I can because creating is a really basic necessity I have and I feel like if I didn't, I wouldn't know how to connect with myself, how to connect with my humanity. My work, my need to paint, to create, to explore is my strongest connection to what I feel like it means to be human, to be alive in this world and in this context of constant inner and outer battles and it helps me connect and I sure hope it does resonate with other people who do struggle with feeling, with connecting and need a place where they can find their strange and unpleasant parts and connect them to something beautiful and unsettling. Take one. Lady Ms. Vagina Jenkins is a monoracial black agender femme wearing a green velvet jacket, braids in their hair, matching green lipstick and a gold crown. Their power phrase, Get Free Boo, is labeled in teal text across the image. We are the Lady Ms. Vagina Jenkins. Pronouns are she, they, and we. We reminds us of the ancestors, the people who survived so that we could thrive. We, us, ours also reminds us that despite the isolation of living as a disabled neurodivergent black person, we are never alone.
Creativity has helped form our identity in that being in the creative process is one of the few times we feel completely present in time space. We feel human and in connection with something greater than the oppressive forces we are surviving. It's in this time space that we finally feel aligned to our guiding principles and in touch with who we are in the world. We are black joy. We are queering. We are freedom. We believe that art making and creativity is freedom. In a world where the culture expects us to adhere to the rules of capitalism, patriarchy, ableism, and so many other oppressive systems, the process of artistic storytelling is one of the few time spaces we can carve out to experience our authentic internal voices. To put it another way, the process of creating helps us decolonize our minds. And as the wise scholar George Clinton once said, free your mind and your ass will follow. The tangible works of art that we create in one's artistic process can act as a seed. These works impregnated by your emancipation can serve to challenge dominant social narratives, can serve to help others begin to free their minds. Divine Joy Triptych is an abstract acrylic triptych of three 16 by 20 unframed canvas acrylic paintings. Organic cloud shapes in outrageous oranges, passionate purples, and tantalizing teals float gently across the three canvases, creating the impression of a slice of an implausibly colored, exuberant sky. My name is Tanisha Skyers, and my pronouns are she, her. I am a Jamaican Canadian. I am a brown skinned woman with dark brown almond shaped eyes. I have long black locks. I am wearing a long black dress with short puff sleeves. My creativity has helped me form my identity because I am a self taught artist and my creativity has forced me to study on my own to learn. I've traveled the world by myself to see and study the art that students learn in school in person. My creativity has taught me to consistently grow, never become complacent, learn how to network with others, and also be grateful. Embracing truths through artistic storytelling frees us to express who we are in the world because we can use the arts for healing and growth. Art can be used to discuss difficult topics in a beautiful manner. Naturally, we are more inclined to listen to tough subjects when they are discussed peacefully. This first painting is about my experience briefly living in Compton, LA. I was shocked to see the amount of homelessness in LA as a Canadian. I was also bothered by the amount of liquor stores found in my neighborhood. I could walk three minutes to a liquor store but would have to travel 30 minutes by bus to get to a grocery store. 
In Beverly Hills, on the other hand, I didn't see any small liquor stores and could easily walk to a Whole Foods. To me, this felt systematically set up for people of color to resort to alcohol instead of living clean and healthy lives. I created this painting as a way to inform Caucasian allies about the injustices people of color still face, something we need to change to move forward, and as a way for me to heal from my own experience. This self-portrait is of Tanisha sitting nude and cross-legged in front of a bright pink liquor store with a bright pink and green floral blanket on top of her, covering her body. She sits with her right hand clasped on top of her left hand. Her arms are on top of her floral blanket and cross legs. She looks onto the viewer with a serious and concerning gaze. Her long hair parted in the center flows behind her. The background and house to the liquor store's left are sky blue fading into teal blue. The liquor store says Bogey's Liquor in pink. Tanisha imitates the homeless child she saw standing on a street corner in LA wearing nothing but a blanket. Tanisha sits in front of a liquor store to symbolize how one can find numerous liquor stores compared to only a few grocery stores in low-income neighborhoods in LA. The second painting is about my experience growing up without a father. While I was a child, I would go through my baby photos and wonder why my father was missing. My mother ripped my father out of most of my baby pictures I had with him, including this one. I grew to learn this was a case for many black individuals. I only know of one black person who was raised by both a black father and mother. My mom was also raised without a dad. Historically, black men haven't been given the opportunity to raise their children from slavery times. We were separated from our fathers so they could be sold. I feel we haven't changed that cycle yet. I created this painting to raise awareness of this issue we face and the need for fathers to raise their sons and daughters. I hope this painting teaches black men to stick around for their families and help raise their children. I would have been grateful if my father helped raise me and teach me things. This self-portrait is of Tanisha as a baby in a solid bright pink onesie held up in the air by her seated father. Her arms are stretched out while her legs dangle. Her baby onesie covers both her hands and feet. Her father's hands are on her ribcage. Her father is wearing a solid bright blue long sleeve top with a solid green alligator wearing solid golden yellow and solid golden yellow typography at the front. Her father is also wearing solid light blue pants. The background is a solid fiery orange with solid red flowers with green stems behind her. There is a solid brown table to the right with a solid red cloth and a solid white small sculpture on the top of the table. The entire left side of the canvas is cut off and missing, cutting off her father, leaving just his hands holding her up, symbolizing her and other black individuals who were raised without a father. Sabi with Sabi Lu Sounds. I'm a 39 year old Nicaraguan woman. She, her pronouns. I have long black hair that I've pulled back into a ponytail. It's straight. I have a few pieces covering the sides of my face just to frame my face. I have light tan skin. I'm wearing a dark green t shirt with a v neck. Um, it's plunges and a black crochet choker with glass beads that hang down in the middle. I create art to help others know that their voice and their light matters and that they're not alone. As a disabled Latina woman diagnosed with CPTSD, I grew up being silenced and shamed and sharing my art was always very important to me, but I was very much discarded by my abusers and neglected. So part of what heals me um, in healing that part of me that was shut away and hidden is to um, use my voice and my light because um, it makes me feel powerful 
to offer healing and compassion to others who have gone through what I have gone through. Um, right now, we're listening to a piece that I wrote. It's a song called Found. I wrote it to my inner child shortly after I started therapy about three years ago. And um, I was basically my whole life trying to connect with the real me, the me that um, feels alive when I do music, that feels alive when I create things, um, whether it's art or stories, uh, because I write and I do videos as, as well. Um, so this song to me um, was basically welcoming myself back home. And um, I also wanted to share with you a piece of art that I drew um, to go with this song. And it's a backdrop here to the side. I, I don't know which side I'm going to put it in, uh, but it'll be there. And um, basically it has a abstract femme woman in light green. It's an adult. And the adult is leading a magenta femme child out of a very dead and brown forest that's very dark and scary and she's leading the little girl um, into the light basically a land that's full of flourishing trees that have all sorts of bright magenta and green colors and a bright sunrise as well um, thank you so much um, for listening and I really hope that you enjoy the rest of the song um, <laughs> thank you so much for Cystic Creatives just for this opportunity and helping me um, you know even being able to share this little bit of myself with you and I really hope you enjoy the song and um, I wrote the lyrics here hopefully you can see them and um, your light and your voice matters. Please remember that. No matter what you have in your life that makes you feel like you're not good enough to share what you have, um, it's not true. I started, you know, sharing my music with just a phone and a very, very low quality computer. Um, but my heart knew that People like me need to know that whether it's money or whether it's, you know, disability, those things shouldn't have to hold us back. We have every right to that accessibility. And um, I guess that's, that's all I wanted to share. And thank you so much. Don't 